I was not anti-hunting. I didn't have any bad feelings towards it. I knew people who did hunt, had friends who did it a little bit, but never could imagine myself killing an animal. I've been hunting for as long as I can remember. Some of my earliest memories are riding around in a car seat when dad was taking me hunting. I grew up outdoors. I feel like it's more of a part of who I am rather than what I do. I did kill my first deer with a bow at the age of 14. I mean, it was something that hooked me for the rest of my life. I mean, I'm 37 now, and I haven't missed one year of archery hunting. I went to work uh, in the hunting industry. Immediately, I was kind of engulfed in that world. I began to be curious about why are these people so passionate about this sport? What is it about it that grabs people and just takes over their life? A lot of people think that a hunt only takes place during the season. It's a constant battle, and I like that because I like the challenge of it. The challenge of bow hunting really appealed to me personally, and I started to look for people that could help me get into bow hunting. You know, we started hanging out, and I figured out that he hadn't got into hunting yet, and that's not acceptable. <laughs> I mean, we have to pass it on. While TJ was my mentor as far as getting me into shooting a bow, teaching me the fundamentals of shooting a bow, my friend Rick had taken me on two great mule deer hunts and things just hadn't quite aligned to where we got the kill. So here we are in 2016. It's my third year bow hunting. And that lucky bomb, Blake, he drew it. He drew a limited entry archery mule deer tag here in Utah. If he was going to do it, this was definitely going to be the time for him to capitalize. The team is myself, Rick, who's been there on the other two hunts, my brother Bronson, and our friend Spencer. We're ready to go, and I'm feeling the pressure to go kill a mule deer with my bow, and I couldn't be more excited about it. So we roll into camp the day before the hunt opener. We choose our spot, the excitement is there, we know we're gonna be hunting the next morning, but first things first, we have to set up camp. And we're planning to be here eight days. Bronson has graciously dragged his trailer down. We're gonna have a nice place to sleep, to cook, to have a decent meal. Rick brings along the real hunt expertise. He knows how deer think. I feel like Rick can help put us on a good buck. Spencer has brought his side by side. He's brought the moral support. A big part of this hunt for me was making sure I was prepared in every way possible, and that included making sure my equipment was ready. TJ built me a set of brand new arrows just for this hunt. For me, knowing that I was gonna be on my son's hunt and not be able to be physically there with Blake, in a sense, me building his arrows for him is, is my way of being in his quiver. You know, so I'm on the hunt with him. So if he gets the chance to shoot a buck, I'm his arrow. We spend that day setting up camp, getting comfortable. We cook a nice dinner, we talk about strategy. And by the time we have camp set up, we're comfortable. We have some daylight left. It's time to go scouting. We roll out on the side-by-sides. We grab the radios. We're going to hit a couple different areas and just try to find some deer the day before opening day so that we know where we want to be when the sun comes up in the morning. My head hits the pillow the night before the opener, confident, excited, nervous, and happy that we're in hunt camp. The alarm didn't go off because I was awake well before it was ready to go off. I was more excited than what you'd see on Christmas morning, and it really surprised me because it was Blake's hunt, and I was as amped to see him succeed as I would have been to see myself succeed. On the way there, we crossed several deer in the road, I saw a couple of bucks, took a look at them. Uh, things just weren't right, so we moved on, worked our way up to the, to the bull that we felt was best, and just spent some time glassing. I decided I needed to, to get up and go take a rest, so I walked up to the side-by-side -side and uh, just off a hunch decided I would go look off the other side of the hill. As I was standing there um, taking a leak, I looked down and I saw two nice bucks. Both of these bucks are definitely worthwhile. That's what Blake is here after. 
It's two bucks together, they're moving around together. Bam, there he is, that's the one I want. From there, that's where Rick's expertise come in for strategy. This, is the, this patch of trees right here is most likely where they're going to bed. The conditions were really dry. I told him that you need to really watch your step, pick it apart slowly, take all the time you need, and pretend like you're sneaking up on Chuck Norris. I started working my way down this hillside. I looked at the ground for every step. Because of that, it took probably an hour to go down not that big of a hill. I worked my way up around the hill to get a better view. As I got into place, they had bedded. I could just see the peaks of those trees over the little hill that I had to get to, so I had a perfect target area to work towards. When he got to what I felt was close enough, I really got a little bit more uptight because I, I kept thinking, stop, stop, just wait right there. And he kept going, he kept moving in, and it was making me anxious. There's no shot with him bedded down, so I know I have to put in the time and just be patient I was starting to feel the heat. I hadn't eaten a lot of food. I had dumped my backpack up at the top of the hill, so I didn't have any water. So I'm just baking there in the sun for probably another hour while I sit there and just wait for them to stand up. Watching down, I got to see the deer. They started to move and they, they fidgeted a little bit and the adrenaline instantly went way high. I can see them moving their heads a little bit. That helps me be able to tell which is the better of the two bucks, which one I really want to go after. Eventually, they both stand up and start feeding. I see the broadside shot. I have time to range him. It's under 50 yards. It's now or never. I draw my bow. I have the buck in the sight. I have the pin where I want it to be. I'm fully drawn. When Blake drew, I started shaking like the bow was in my hand. It was pretty intense. And that sound made me sick. It sounded to me like an arrow hitting a tree, and I felt devastated. I had blown the perfect chance, the perfect stock, the perfect situation. The deer came out of there, and I was glassing for all I was worth trying to look and verify. We saw the two bucks bust up the hillside, turn broadside towards me, and I could see that the arrow had hit home. And when I saw the arrow sticking out of the deer, I was so relieved. And I saw that it was in a good position. I knew it was just a matter of timing. <laughs> I always kind of wondered what that first big game animal was going to feel like. I'm not really sure what I feel right now and all that fun stuff, but we're going to go get our hands on it. Rick put a perfect plan together for us. Like we said, the mantra from the start of this was third time's a charm, third time hunting deer with, with a bow here in Utah. And uh, we were able to get it done this year for the first time. The best part of the hunt is regrouping with the other hunters, with the support, with the friends. Couldn't wait to see Bronson and Spencer come down the mountain. They had watched it all unfold as well. So this is my first time getting my hands on a buck that I've shot, uh, first big game animal period. Pretty freaking awesome feeling. I know he respects the animal that he harvested and he appreciates him. And, you know, he gets to look at that buck, he's gonna get it mounted, it's gonna be on his wall, and he gets to remember everything leading up to it and everything after. It happened on day one. It, this is what I wanted to happen so that everybody could share in this with me. Rick was able to be there, my brother Bronson was there, Spencer was there. So sharing the success of the hunt with other people is, is part of the excitement, it's fun. I think the best response came from Audra. She was so excited for me because she knew how bad I wanted it and to be able to bring it home to the family and enjoy it, um, show Magnus and Bertie, tell them about the hunt, what it was like, help them to understand what hunting is all about and how exciting it can be and how rewarding it can be to have hard work pay off is a great thing for a father to be able to, to show his kids. So while the, the hunt only lasted basically a morning, uh, we had a lot of build up to it. But those memories 
carry you through to the next one, that success, that adrenaline rush, reliving everything. I still see the, the images vivid in my head and relive everything. You, you, you smell the smells of the desert, the sagebrush. You relive everything and it keeps you going back for more. Some sunset. Didn't really expect much out of tonight.
trees right there. He didn't move an inch. Dead right there. So I'm the only guy that's ever elk hunted before. All these other fellas have never done it. And man, they've worked hard, they've studied, they've prepared, and uh, man, I really feel that uh, we're gonna come out on time. Mentally, left a little bit of chaos back home. Um, so that's occupying me a little bit. I think you know, Ben informed me that I'm the least prepared one of the bunch. Equipment wise, I'm really hoping I can set my tent up. <laughs> I borrowed it too. I'd love it if you take that tent out and it's Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> All new terrain for me. I've never been out west. Just uh, want to unplug and get reset. Not to rush through this. Just take every minute in. Get away from work with no deadlines and disconnect and just be in God's creation. And we can still see and, uh, the trucks. I can still see the truck and we're lost. <laughs> I heard Keith talk about pre-hunt goals, and it's pretty phenomenal some of these guys pre-hunt goals. And mine was to be in the best adult shape I've ever been in in my life. And uh, man, by far, I am. I've lost 20 pounds in preparation for this trip, and I feel like I am in better shape than I've ever been going into an adventure like this. So I expect that to pay off big time. That on the last day, I'm hunting as hard as uh, I was hunting on the first day. Strip away the pride, the arrogance, and the fear. Go before us, God. Bless us with safety. Bless our ankles with solid steps. Bless our backs with strong muscles. Bless our shots with strong follow through and shot placement. We love you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Idaho, only 10% of elk tags are filled. Only 3% of those are archery tags. On average, it takes five to six years for an out-of-state hunter to harvest their first elk. The odds are not in one's favor. So here I am going on my fourth elk hunt. I've been so close so many times. Years ago, I went to Colorado and we had really close calls, but were unsuccessful. My second attempt 
was in the Gunnison National Forest in Colorado. We were backpacking. It was incredible. But let me tell you, it was the hardest thing I had ever done. Something I'll never do again. <laughs> Man, I didn't understand that desire for more. I wanted more of that raw adventure and I wanted my son to experience it with me. So when he turned 18 in 2014, we packed up the truck and we headed out west. We had so many close encounters and we failed. Blake couldn't join me this season, but I wanted others, I wanted my brothers to experience this kind of adventure. In turn, I suckered them all into it with the theme of raw adventure and screaming bull elk. You know, they say after your first elk hunt or two, it gets in your blood and there's no getting away from the beckoning call of the mountains. Physically and mentally, it was tough for me. Fear of failing or fear that, uh, that I don't have what it takes to get it done. And that hinders my, my decisions. The first couple of days when we absolutely saw zero, we looked at each other like after day one, we're like, what's the point here? Like, I think we're gonna spend seven days just walking around Idaho. You know, I said at the beginning of the trip that I was 100% you know, planning on killing an elk, which was the reason why, you know, I came on uh, this trip. And, uh, but I also said, I'm not gonna miss the moments in between. Let's see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What are we on, Wallace, F or G? We are on plan F. The guys that are here aren't here by chance. Each one of them are special. But uh, man, some of these guys are some of the best friends of my life. And uh, didn't get to spend as much time with some as I did others. Uh, but watching the layers just be stripped away. You know, there's something about raw creation that God uses to just uh, awaken us to something so much greater. And uh, to see guys recognize that and then to engage in it. My expectations of how I stack up to other people has for so many years has been influenced by my success in, in the fitness world. I've just expected that I would be one of the top of whatever. And it just hit me like super hard, like what? I, this is not how it's supposed to be. Come on, give it up. Up on that mountain, I, I think Jesus was saying, dude, you got, you got a lot of pride wrapped up in a lot of what you do. That's become part of your identity. That lesson just really, really um, hit me strongly. Hunting elk is no joke. And I knew that there was an emotional element as well. To be unplugged like that for the average everyday guy is significant. It's pretty neat, man. Yeah, so that's how I spend my morning. <laughs> Come here. I feel like crap. I feel like crap that I'm here hunting. And, uh... <clears throat> One thing this this trip really brought to surface is how I don't take advantage of the time that I have with my family. That's one thing that I'm gonna change leaps and bounds when I get home. I realize how many corners I cut. Um, you know, it's a, as a dad, or a husband, 
where I'll, uh, you know, lay down the law, you know, because I love them and I want to lead them, but I don't have the virtue to back it up. In our fast-paced, self-indulgent, selfie-taken society, there may be no better way to bring focus to the craziness of life than through raw adventure. You see, we all desire the same thing. More challenge, more meaning, more purpose. The desire for more exists within all of us, and for many, adventure rapidly brings these desires to the forefront and into focus. This may be the very reason that we seek adventure. Our lives can be defined as an expedition in pursuit of fulfillment. We have climbed the mountains, fished the streams, hiked the hills, and have swum the seas all in an effort to acquire the elusive trophy of fulfillment. All of our attempts have ended in dissatisfaction. The desire for more is still burning. Tell me, do we get what we deserve? Yeah. Oh, we get what we deserve. And where down we go, go, go. It's always been a dream of ours to just pick a spot on a map and go there. You can do what's a little uncomfortable and make a dream come true because this has been one of the greatest experiences that I've ever been part of. So I'm tagged out. It just, everything came together. Myself, Ty, and my dad were going home and uh, got to go back to work and get to see our families. But the, the other crew, um, the other four, we're back at it. And they're gonna be hitting Colorado hard. They're, hit, they're literally gonna pick a spot on a map and say, let's go there. We've never been there before, but it's an adventure. And I guarantee you, it's gonna be worth it. I'm on a roll and I'm ready to ride. We slept under the pickup last night. We, we drove all night and everything and got about three or four hours of sleep. Made it here today, packed everything all up, repacked all our stuff. and. And so we're expecting hopefully no one's here, you know, a little secret spot, kind of a honey hole place. And we get here and this is, this is what we find. We're just going to pack in and hope for the best. You just got to, you know, realize, believe in yourself and believe that you're, you're better hunters, you know. That's what we do. We're committed to, the, to doing this and, and we're going to get it done. So time to pack up, put the load on our back and head on in and make camp for six days. So where down we go, Ooh, way down we go.
the decision to come to a new area was pretty tough to come up with and it's tough to kind of leave everything that you knew where to hunt and, and the, the ridges you know and, and the, the draws and where the water's at and when you're camping on your back you got to kind of just roll with it sometimes and came here and it's different it's way different the landscape's different the mountains are different the terrain way different and so anyway we're just trying to make it happen and and trying to do that The plan refuses to venture or carry a risk, all but when he is done, no one will remember the breath that he missed. See the gypsies travel, his body is weathered, weary and weak, but his mind is full of adventure and the beauty of all that he. La da da, la da da, la da da, la da 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 da. Dude, I got that whole thing perfect. <laughs> Cody, that was money. Perfect. I said, oh gosh. Pushing through. Pushing through. That's what it's all about, dude. Push, push, push. We look for that one, that one opportunity, a season. And it was just like, I we did it as hard as we could. It was pretty cool. Phases of time in the blink of a tree. We rode the sea in the crush of the brine. Well, we're in this together. This living endeavor that seldom seems right. Well, you can't live forever. So why not remember something other than wasting all of your time? La -la -la -la. Me. 
No matter who you are as a hunter, what skill level, whether you're a bow hunter or gun hunter, we all have one thing in common. We all started somewhere. Some place that we stalked that first animal, sat in the stand for the first time. place where we honed our skills and grew as hunters. patch of woods in South Arkansas, a camp. My wife's family has hunted here for well over 50 years, and the remnants of the past are scattered all around the timber. This isn't the place where I go chase giant whitetail. I'm fortunate enough to get to hunt several other states to fulfill my cravings for giant antlers. Camp is a place I go to fulfill a different kind of craving. This is where I go to get away from everything, to just be with my thoughts. It's a place I go for solitude. I guess deep down I still have these expectations of a nice buck easing under my stand. get more joy out of it if my wife or her dad has that opportunity. And even though I don't get to spend as much time there as I used to, the camp is where it all began. And the time I spend there is as important as the time I spend in the land of the giants. There's just something about your home camp, where it all started.
just something about being at your home camp. I'm sure you can relate. A fire that's just a little bit warmer. Breakfast tastes just a little bit better. Things are just a little more laid back when you're in camp. As the grass gave way, like a ghost, he appeared. My heart raced, louder and louder. I could hear the clock ticking in my head, and all my time spent give way. Was this finally my opportunity? Last few years I was lucky enough to get permission on a few farms in Kansas and drawing a tag. Anyone who hunts Kansas knows it's the land of the giants. This area is known for big deer, I just hadn't seen one that I wanted to go after. Uh, kept checking my trail cameras, um, going up week after week and hunting and, and not seeing anything. Further into the season, um, I went in and, and hung a couple cameras up and there was a big shooter on one of my cameras. And so I knew immediately I needed to hang a set and the weather was, was perfect, it was a little windy and so I knew that I could get in and get out without spooking anything. And immediately hunted that set that evening and sure enough, stands up out of the CRP four or 500 yards away is, is a giant deer. 
I figured it was the same buck, but I couldn't tell for sure. He just wasn't interested in anything I had to offer. It was calm. It was probably about 60 degrees that evening. Sitting there and see several different does working out in the CRP. I watched a couple of little young bucks nudging some does around. All of a sudden, I kind of look over my shoulder to the right. Maybe I just shot him. I just shot the giant. Yeah, I did. Yep. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe it. All right, baby. Love you. Bye. I've harvested some big deer in the past, but this deer is by far the biggest deer I've taken with a bow. Even when I had my doubts and struggles, this season was a dream come true and a blessing from above. Being able to pursue my passion is a gift that I will never take for granted. But I know there's deeper meaning in it all to give back to the one who creates it. Why do we keep coming back to these elk woods? Year after year, we spend money on tags and travel. We use up our vacations, beat up our bodies, all for something that always seems to end in defeat. Do we just enjoy the punishment? No, for us, it's always been about more than just filling a tag.
we definitely want to get an elk still. But in the process, we've seen some of the most beautiful land in America and have made bonds that are going to last a lifetime. We've also had a few nice consolation prizes along the way too. Are we going back for elk again next year? Damn right we are. Another September had come and gone, just like the last three years. But this year was different. I lived in Idaho now, and I still had a two-week rifle season left. Since they locked me away, it's been three dark days. Ah. Cold as hell, cold as hell. It's been cold as hell in my lonely cell. It's cold. my ways, change my ways, they told me I could leave soon if I change my ways, it's been three dark days.
Oh my God. I just killed an elk. <clears throat> I can't believe how that just went down. Oh my goodness. Thank God. Thank God. That was that was a blessing right there. Man. I, I got up. I, I can't even talk. I made a loud snap. So I'm like, well, they know I'm down here. So I'm going to make it sound like I'm a cow. So I set up against this tree and started doing a cow call. All of a sudden I hear a bugle like 200 yards behind me. I wanted to get one with my bow. I'm gonna swing the camera around. Everything happened so fast. My bow's sitting seven yards that way and I had my rifle with me and I'm just like, I'm gonna get the help, I don't care. He's laying down. I can see him, he's 75 yards away, laying down. Oh my goodness. After a four year journey, I finally had my hands on an elk. And although I was sitting out there that morning by myself, I couldn't help but feel the presence of the guys I'd been chasing elk with for nearly half a decade. We are back. We got our Infinity QX70 rental car. Very luxurious. I asked the lady at Hertz, I'm like, we got a four wheel drive unit? She's like, yeah, it's the uh, Infinity. It's one of the nicest ones we got. I was like, perfect. That might be a mistake on your part, sweetheart, but we'll take it. The last two years, Dave and I have been fortunate enough to fly out to North Dakota for two and a half days, about two weeks prior to our hunt. This really gives us an opportunity to kind of see what we're up against for our trip, and when we drive out there for opening day, we can really hit the ground running and start hunting as soon as we get there. This is a brand new season for us. We got a clean slate, our anticipation and excitement is through the roof. We really have no idea what to expect. At the same time, we expect big things. We came out here four years ago not knowing a thing about North Dakota bow hunting. And with no guide, learning these deer, learning this property completely on our own, that's really been the addiction with this trip. Yo, we got a turn right here. Holy shit. This is why you don't put corn in an infinity. When you try to stop, the corn goes all over, freaking up to the front seat in this damn thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that thing, clean as a whistle. thirsty 78 bucks we'll never see again before we're here we're tucked in the rosary we're here thank god 646 that makes our drive approximately 18 hours and 15 minutes 18 wow Bow hunting North Dakota is unlike hunting whitetails anywhere else. It forces you to be unconventional. Whether you're in a tree, in a bush, on a rock pile, it doesn't matter. 
you've got to do what it takes to get closest to those deer. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be uncomfortable. But that's the beauty of hunting this land up here. It forces you to adapt, try new tactics, and really become a better hunter. It's nice to get up in the stand and breathe in the North Dakota fresh air. We haven't seen a deer yet, but hopes are high. up against. We got some gnarly weather coming in. This is it. No more dress rehearsals. This is the real thing. September 10th is our last day in the bush in North Dakota. It's game seven. We did kind of prepare ourselves to come back in a month if we need to or want to. For now, it's one last sit on the rock pile, do or die. six days of our trip on that damn rock pile. We went all in, and maybe we shouldn't have, but we were cover up in deer every day, and we got some pretty cool stories to show for it. Well, it's October 15th. Surprisingly, Dean and I are in North Dakota. Never thought we'd be out here this time of year I guess but kind of made a last minute decision to pack the bags pack the truck and make the drive out pretty excited to be out here you know there's very little room for error with only four days to hunt hard to beat a sit like this even though you didn't see one deer We've literally been in more trees than we've seen deer in the past two days. So when the deer aren't moving, you have to go move them. We're gonna go do the unconventional, but we've never been conventional anyway, so that doesn't really suit our style. Dude, I didn't see a deer. We slipped in here, we hung this stand. Quite honestly, this is the best stand setup I think that we've ever had in North Dakota. Well, this is it. The last day of three trips and a total 21 day hunt in North Dakota.
Go down, baby. Go down. Right there. Go down right there. You smoked it, did you? I think so. Look at that. You know who that is? Oh, dude. Oh my gosh, Dean. Are you kidding me, man? Dean, Dean, we just completed. I can't. Oh my God! Can you? Oh my gosh, dude! I can't believe it, man. Dude, give me a freaking hug. Give me a freaking hug. You gotta freaking love this sport, man. You gotta love it. You just—it does not. It does not get any better. I can't. Oh my. Stop. I don't know. Well, you're gonna be able to see it. Oh my gosh, thank you, God. I can't believe when you least expect it. Let's go get him. <laughs> Let's go get this freaking thing. Oh. Dude, are you kidding me, baby? We just got it done, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, that is a Look at the size of that deer, Dean. Look at the size <laughs> of that North Dakota buck. So oftentimes we get caught up in trying to script each one of our hunts. Especially a hunt like this where time is of the essence. I mean, you want to plan it out, you want to be successful. And honestly, if we were to script this trip, we probably would have been tagged out back in September. But in the middle of October, we went off of a gut feeling, we packed the bags, we drove 18 hours back up to North Dakota, knowing that some of the best things in life happen when you are willing to take a risk and be spontaneous. And that is exactly what defines this North Dakota trip. Badlands Film Festival, vote for Tag and Brag, all your wildest dreams will come true. If you get a couple drinks in you, I know it'll come true. I don't think you can grow up a farmer or a rancher without working hard. That's just part of the deal. Junior Seau told me one time, that said, I don't want to play with a guy that owns a mansion, that owns fancy cars, that owns all this land, that owns all these things. He said, I want to play with a guy that's trying to earn it. And I've always held that real close to myself. And, and I try to be the guy every day that's going out there in the arena, I'm trying to be the guy that's trying to earn that job.
I've been guiding on this ranch going on 10 years now, always improving food plots, minerals. We're in beautiful country here. It's a wildlife sanctuary. I don't know that I've seen so much game on one ranch in my life. He's running back. First one, 415. So the smaller one just stood up. Big game hunting's not easy. If you want to kill a nice animal, you're going to have to work for it. Yeah, he's still sitting there. He's behind all the trees. You're 398. Yeah. When you put in the work and, and you've sat there and waited and, and question whether you were going to be successful or not, and then it pays off, it's, I mean, there's never a better feeling. One sixty-six and one eight. People think lion hunters are crazy, and I guess we kind of are in a way. It's the unknown for me, a hunt completely out of my control of where I might end up or what I might see. Finding a track is only the beginning. Once I turn him loose, I can't turn around and he will not give up.
It could be a mile or it could be 10, but I have to make it. A barking hound is music to my ears out here and is a welcome break to the solitude of the wind and my steps in the snow. A lion's eyes will burn holes through you at this distance, sending a shot of adrenaline through your body so fast, it's hard not to shake. Weighing in at 130 pounds, this is a big tom, but I'm looking for bigger. Someday, our paths may cross again out here, and maybe not. The hunt is successful already, and we are both completely satisfied with the day. He treated his quarry, and I simply made it. I made it to gather my hound up safely and witness one of the most amazing creatures put on this earth by Mother Nature, the mountain lion. our families kind of laugh amongst themselves each year when we tell them we're embarking on another once-in-a-lifetime hunt. And maybe we overused the moniker a little bit, but this time we had proof on our tags. This is the Valle Vidal. This is New Mexico elk country. And we have one shot to get it done. elk. My dad and his two boys had three archery elk tags in a place referred to as the Valley of Life and I just missed. Though big bulls were taunting me in my head I knew that life could change in a matter of seconds so I maintained my optimism, kept my chin up and worked hard with my dad and my brother. These are Rocky Mountain ghosts, and the wind is on their side. Sometimes gentle, 
but always the game changer. But we keep after it. This is hunting, by the way, not killing. It's about the journey, says this guy who just missed his bull. And sometimes it all comes together. Late on day 14 of a 14 day hunt, our old man demonstrates a lifetime of lessons he's tried to impart. It's smooth exactly, but he just said at 8.34 p.m. I have backstrap. What? Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, God, man. Oh. With the release of his arrow, a decision, backstrap over bone, reminded me why he is my hero. Thanks, Dad. No, I'm it's like, old man shit. draws first blood again. <laughs>it's not about the hunt it's more about um, changing a pace in life to find rest for your soul i think it's a part of who we are as a spiritual being it's in us the need to get back out in his creation it's a different rhythm of life and it puts you just in a, a beautiful place where you get to kind of be captured up by the beauty. Honey at Night is a completely different world. It just, it just comes alive at night. You get to experience uh, life with the animals on, on their playing field, on their terms. There's just a way that animals behave at night that is different than the daytime. Every animal that you chase during the day is out. Everything is out. You can hunt the same place for 10, 15 years and everything looks completely different at night. Just your, your depth perception and, and what, you, what you assume is completely different. It offers unique challenges that uh, you don't necessarily think of and you don't necessarily get to experience in the daytime. You're getting to experience the same sport in a different way, and it's, it's a lot of fun. if you look up time in the dictionary it will tell you the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past present and future us as hunters have our own definition 18 yards Nick. I think I got him. <laughs> actually epic. What stage of growth you in? I mean, there is strong, strong. Now you're allowed to hunt, but not allowed to go. Yeah. In the tree stand yet. We're looking forward to the whole week. Weather looks perfect. And uh, bring on the black bears, baby. I'm excited. I got the, I got the shakes already and it hasn't even started. 
as a hunter, time can often take on a whole new meaning. Moments where five seconds feels like five minutes, and times where five minutes can feel like five seconds. And these moments often occur just before the trigger is pulled, where time almost feels like it's standing still. And on night one of my hunt, I had those few seconds that we spend so many hours for, where time stood completely still. To have one of those moments is extremely rare. To do it twice, that's something that'll probably never happen again. Oh my god. Just don't love the first time. All better. Right. <laughs> When we started on this journey of sharing our adventures with others over 10 years ago, little did we know that our time spent together in the field would actually diminish. Along with the success came greater demands, and the number of hunting camps we shared together dwindled. Last year we made a commitment to plan a couple of hunts a year where we could remember the passion that started us on this crazy wild ride. And relive the camaraderie and the laughter that bonded us as kindred spirits. This is one such adventure. I'm gonna pack up, I'm gonna drop down into the gut and I'm gonna follow that all the way over to those, to that last ridge. Here's the deal, we're at the last hour of the last day, but there's many reasons why we hunt. And one of the main reasons is the food that's provided by these animals. So if I get the opportunity on this buck, I'm gonna take it. Some old cowboy in a Texas green. My shot ran, what should I do? He felt dead, I was aiming for you.
is laying in front of me at 20 yards in his bed sound asleep. So as I'm sneaking up over the top, the bigger buck that I was looking for is bedded. He's 15 yards away. Broadside, sound asleep. We signal for Trevin to come over here. The buck is laying in a perfect position for him to sneak up with his trad bow and shoot 15 yards right across the canyon. My shot ran. That's crazy. He was bedded right there. Congratulations, buddy. That's a nice buck. He's dead. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Yes. The end result of this adventure in Nebraska was much more than notching a tag or filling our coolers. The time we spend together in the field is just a catalyst to the camaraderie, an open invitation to re-engage with the very thing that sparked our friendship in the first place, and a chance to prioritize what's really important. Being able to share the adrenaline rush of each and every encounter, whether it ends in a harvest of a trophy mule deer buck at the end of a blood trail, or the disappointment of an opportunity lost, these are the events that form strong bonds. I'm convinced that a successful hunt can never be measured by inches of antler, but the laughter shared, the memories made, and the fellowship lit by a common campfire, that is what defines a successful hunt. buck of my life. <laughs> I gotta wait a couple of hours for the boys to come up to help me get him because he's way down the creek bed so I'm not even gonna go down there. Looking at you, looking at him. Oh my gosh, that was freaking move. Going to get Donnie boy. Going to get Donnie. He's dead. No tracking needed. That's him, that's him, that's him. Dean, left, 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 left. There he goes. Kill him. Still alive. Oh, shit. Are you on him? Did he take off? Did you miss him? I didn't hear him go up any farther. Is he stopped up here? He, it looked like he went down. That's what I thought. 
Stay there, let him on. Yeah, let Bean get up. Stay right there for a second. Let me get on the... Bean, got there he is. Got there he is. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Bean. Holy shit. He's on a bad run. Holy shit. I saw... He's still... That is a big buck. Wow. I can't believe you just jumped him. <laughs> Dude, he was gone. He was gone. He was gone. Oh, we know. He was gone. Right, but when do I hit him? Look at that rack. That is a hell of a buck, Dad. That is a beautiful buck. Look at the mass on that here. Look at the mass. That is an incredible, incredible buck. Yeah. That's your deer. No, that's our deer. That's our deer, but it's your deer. That's I mean, that deer is gone. Look at the mass on that freaking hog. That is I gotta look on the other side of him. Wow. Him. Was what a shot, man. I was worried about that. I he got up it. and I was like, no way. As soon as I heard the noise, I looked over, all I saw was his rack going through and he was like crawling. What a story now. I mean, it was, it was, the story was over and it just got, <laughs> it just got a little better. better. <laughs> man, thank God I waited for you guys.